Right, so I could not think of a better stock to kick off the series than really implementing the classic vegetable stock. Mirepoix, sauce a piece, some water, and a little bit of thyme. Such a good starting point for any kind of soup, any kind of sauce, any kind of gravy. It's a must know how to do. Let's hop into it. Super easy to nail down. Just getting proportions right. So the mirepoix is just two parts onion, one part celery, one part carrot. And I'm gonna start off with one pound of yellow sweet onions. Get rid of that root end and that outer paper layer and give them a rough chop. Wash your carrots off, line them up and give them a chop. I don't even worry about peeling those either, it's optional. Eight ounces of carrots and eight ounces of celery. Wash it, give it a chop. You don't have to be super precise with the cuts, just make sure they're somewhat uniform in size. Next is putting together a sachet de piece. And in that I put herb stems, whole cloves, peppercorns, bay leaves, and garlic cloves. I'll put the full details in the description. And tie it off with some butcher's twine. To me, every avid home cook or anybody that works in a restaurant as a cook needs to know how to make this stock. There's no fancy sweating down the mirror pot in this one for me. I'm going for more of a neutral stock. One of it has a little bit more of an intense mirror pot flavor in it, which I really enjoy. I'm gonna get the tall stock pot that I have and fill it about eight quarts of water. I just know that's too much from the top on this one. Get it on the heat and bring that up to a boil. I decided to toss in two shallots as well. I just really enjoy the taste of the shallots in the stock. So I'm gonna cook that stock for about an hour and a half and toss that sachet in about halfway through the cook process. Tie that butcher stone off to the handle in the pot. You could use it in so many different applications, a lot of different soups, a lot of different sauces, a lot of different gravies. I know I use that a lot in this video, but to me, that's just what stocks are used for. Declaze in a pan, you could use it to cook some rice, you could use it to cook some quinoa. It's such a good way to really just kick up the flavors and really just take it above and beyond just using water to cook your rice with, using water to cook your quinoa with, using water to make your soups with, which I don't know why you just use water to make your soups, but I've seen worse. Notice that there's a little bit of foam starting to collect on the top of that stock, so I just offset the stock pot ever so slightly on the burner and use a little and get rid of that foam. I just don't really like the way it makes that stock taste or look. Work really hard on the stock and I want to make sure to end up with a beautifully colored, fully flavored stock. I could not think of a better way to start this channel off than putting together a nice stock series for you. Just the basics. Stocks to me are the very essence, their very starting point. You cannot have a good soup, you cannot have a good sauce, you cannot have a good gravy without at first starting with a good stock. There's so many different stocks. You can have mushroom, you can have white mirepoix, you can have corn, you can have just a classic vegetable stock. No matter what kind of stock you're making, you have to nail it down. You have to have a beautiful stock that's really methodically put together. Being that this is a plant-based channel, all of these are naturally gonna be plant-based. So they are the starting point of what it is you need to know in order to make a good soup, in order to make a good sauce, in order to make a good gravy. Stocks are a very necessary, very easy, per se, starting point. I'll give the stock a taste after about an hour of the cooking process, and if I'm satisfied, I'll pull that sachet out and get this stock ready to strain. I have my little helper here, but then I figured out that I can't do it one-handed, and I have to call in for backup, my oldest son, to help me strain it out. So be very careful, because obviously that's hot, and make sure you have something to catch that stock with. I've made that mistake before. And I'm pointing vigorously at the strainer, probably just to tell him to pull that strainer out of the stock and let it drip for a couple seconds. That is such a beautiful color. I love the stock. The smell on it is just so fantastic. Some of the stocks that I'm gonna put in these series are gonna be used more for specific things. Like I'm gonna do a roasted vegetable stock that's gonna really be geared toward making a bolognese or a tomato soup. Whereas the classic vegetable stock is more of a neutral stock where you could use it across the board, making a soup, making a gravy making a sauce. I like to store half of the stock in a nice container. That way if I want to use it later in the week, I can. And the other half, I freeze it. Put it in a gallon Ziploc bag and lay it on the side in the freezer. That way it takes up a lot less space. So to me, the most important stock that I could really nail down and really share with you is a classic vegetable stock. This one is super simple. Just mirepoix, a sachet de piece, and that's it. And a little bit of time and some water. 